Councilmember Kettle. Here. Councilmember Strauss. Present. Councilmember Wu. Present. Vice Chair Hollingsworth. Present. Chair Saka. Here. Councilmember, there are, sorry, Chair, there are five members present. All right, and today we have two non-committee council members also joining our committee this morning. And I'd like to extend a very special welcome to council members Moore and Morales. Thank you for joining us today. Colleagues, if, if there are no objections, the agenda will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the agenda is adopted. So first off, welcome members and guests to this year's fifth Transportation Committee. We have a public hearing on the third item of the agenda regarding the petition to vacate an alley. So there will be an initial public comment period and then the public hearing on the specific petition itself, the third item on the agenda, will be towards the end of the meeting. So make sure you are signed up in the right spot to make your comments. All right, we will now open the hybrid public comment period. Public comments should relate to items on today's agenda or within the broader purview of this committee. Clerk, how many speakers are signed up today? Chair Saka, we have 20 in-person speakers and six remote speakers. All right, each speaker will have approximately 60 seconds or one minute. We will start with the in-person speakers first, clerk, can you please read the public comment instructions? The public comment period will be moderated in the following manner. The public comment period is up to 20 minutes. Speakers will be called in order in the order in which they are registered. Speakers will hear, hear a chime when 10 seconds are left of their time. Speakers mics will be muted if they do not end their comments within the allotted time to allow us to call on the next speaker. The public comment period is now open and we will begin with the first speaker on the list. Mary Baccarella. Go ahead. Go ahead, just start, thank you, sorry. Good morning, council members. I'm Mary Baccarella. I'm the executive director of the Pike Place Market PDA, and I'm here today to ask that you remove Project 65 Pike Place Event Street from the Seattle Transportation Plan. Pike Place Market isn't a park, it's a working market that facilitates a wide variety of merchant customer interactions. Pike Place's street is the operational spine of the market, the essential artery for the market's functionality for deliveries, emergency, and customer access. It's not like any other street in Seattle. I ask the, the city to allow the PDA to handle the management of the street. The fate of over 500 of our businesses, small shops, restaurants, craftspeople, farmers, buskers, 480 residents, and five social services vital to the city remain in the hands of those who understand that best, the PDA and the market community. Over 50 years ago, the citizens of Seattle created this PDA that I work for to operate the market, so please let us do all that. For all these reasons I just touched on, I ask you to remove Project 65 Pike Place Event Street from the Seattle Transportation Plan. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Margard. Good morning. On August 10th, the Seattle Times editorial board published, here's a bit of advice for Mayor Harrell and the Seattle City Council. If you pour money into plans to build a new streetcar down First Avenue, scrap any notion of asking voters to renew a transportation levy in 2024. Concluding, if they do, voters should consider it reason enough to reject any new property taxes to pay for, quote, vital transportation projects next year. <clears throat> Since then, project costs have escalated by another $160 million. Virtually all merchants, eateries, hotels, cultural venues, and property owners along the route oppose the project, stating that it would do major damage to their businesses, in some cases irreparably, and severely inhibit the downtown recovery. Further, a thorough environmental impact study and traffic simulation impact assessment have never been made. As a signatory to the First Avenue Transit Alliance representing those above, please amend the SDP to exclude the connector project from the SDP. Thank you. 
Mike Stewart. Good morning, uh, Chair Saka and members of the Transportation Committee. Mike Stewart, Ballard Alliance Executive Director, representing hundreds of businesses and thousands of residents in the community of Ballard. Today, I'm here to urge this committee and the Seattle City Council to take an active role in helping the communities of Ballard, Fremont, and Westlake work with SDOT on a compromise solution for the proposed Route 40 changes. We all support a vast majority of the, the project proposals, uh, including the pedestrian improvements and the transit signal priority usage. However, the proposed 24-7 bus only lanes present unique challenges for our neighborhood business districts. And we've grown frustrated by the lack of progress from SDOT to work in earnest and hear our communities and work together for a solution. With the transportation levy renewal right around the corner, not, now is the time for a robust engagement from SDOT that demonstrates they're committed to working with us, that they're committed to working on the significant impacts that the proposal presents for businesses, residents, and the freight community. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth Wilder. Hi, I, I'm Elizabeth Wilder, and I represent 57 families in my neighborhood who signed this petition, which simply asks SDOT to meet with us in person to address wrong-way traffic. We live at the second busiest intersection in the city, over 68,000 cars per year, according to SDOT, uh, 2,400 pedestrians, the third highest bike usage, and six people were in a serious or fatal pedestrian collision on these two blocks in 2020, according to SDOT. We have been trying for at least seven years to get a meeting and they won't meet with us. They send us do not reply emails that tell us that we live in the best of all possible worlds. Um, this place is very poorly signposted. People are frustrated. They are trying to get to 520. They can't, there is no sign. Um, I don't, we don't understand why we can't have a high vis red, you know, at our street like they have here in Green Lake, which is a much less busy location. Again, six people dead, second highest traffic in the city. Thank you. And I'm happy to give you maps, and I'm happy to give you copies of the petition. I'll be dropping them off with Councilmember Hollingsworth, whose staff, Alex, has so kindly worked with me on this. I thank you very much, ma'am. Mike Strickland. Good morning, all. I am a uh, Canal Station condominium HOA president, and the proposed uh, SDOT Route 40 design right now totally eliminates our loading zone, and 169 residents and three businesses will have no way to safely offload and load, along with FedEx, Uber, everybody else that comes with all these delivery packages. Amazon's probably our biggest one. We really need to have that reconsidered uh, and because we have no other option to access to our elevator to use to get to the, to the residents. And I appreciate your support in uh, looked into more in depth uh, by the design team. Thank you. Thank you. Howard Anderson. Good morning. Uh, the Seattle Transit uh, Coalition uh, Alliance is uh, opposed to the streetcar, obviously. The reason being is that we have the most viable street at First Avenue, the most active street in town, and it connects five of the neighborhoods um, on the two mile corridor, and it's the gateway to the Pike Place Market. If the streetcar were to go in, Four blocks would be ended, would at, uh, ja starting at Cherry to Jackson, would be closed, and First Avenue becomes a dead end. Um, we're proposing a street, um, a transit plan for that street, First Avenue, it requires bring, bringing back the buses that were, remo were removed to Third Avenue and reestablishing as a real connector on First Avenue, serving local. <laughs> the other reason for rejecting this 440 million 
reasons to reject this, and you know where that number comes from. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Malone. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to address some issues in regard to Route 40. <clears throat> I want to first of all endorse the comments of my colleague, Mike Stewart. Uh, I, I think he did a great job of giving you a general outline. What I'm here to say specifically is that there are several arteries throughout the city of Seattle that are really important to us um, that are part of this route. Route 40 is important goes all the way from Northgate to South Seattle, but it cuts through several streets. One of them is Market Street. Market Street is not just a street for us, it's the east-west artery. For all of Ballard, uh, I'm an emeritus member of the <clears throat> National Nordic Museum, and we're really dependent upon that street. So we're only asking for the SDOT to take some of our ideas into consideration so we can make this a better uh, plan than it is right now. Thank you. Thank you. Devin McComb. Hey, good morning, Chair Saka and council members. Uh, my name is Devin McComb. I have the honor of serving as the chair of the governing council of the Pike Place Market PDA. Uh, and I am here today to ask you to please, let's keep the market, meaning we don't want you to uh, take away the responsibility that the PDA and the MHC and the market community has for governance. And we want to maintain our control and management of Pike Street. It's not an event street, it's not a cafe street, it's a market street. It has been since the market was founded in that street in 1907. Uh, and what we would ask you to do is uh, allow us, through our master plan process, which we just completed and adopted last Thursday, uh, to develop a plan for the management and the operation of the street that serves the market community and is informed by the market community. The city created the community to govern the market, and we're asking that you let us do that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Eric Pill? Good morning. Good morning. My name is Eric Peel. I work for the National Nordic Museum. I'm here to talk about a couple issues about the transportation master plan, but also about the Route 40. I think there's been an absence of good, commu of meaningful community engagement around the around the transportation master plan, and that's really evidenced by the SDOT's engagement with the Route 40. It's been largely driven by special interest and uh, by box checking. Uh, there's a group of more than 50 community leaders and organizations from the North End who have reached out to SDOT a couple times to talk about issues with the Route 40, but those have largely gone unanswered. I'd encourage you to take more time with reviewing the master plan, transportation master plan, to ensure that there is meaningful engagement, and that is not a top-down approach, but a meaningful two-way dialogue with community, and that you would also encourage SDOT to review the, master, the Route 40 um, plan with the community. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Osner. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, my name is Paul Osher. I own Rachel's Bagels on Leary Avenue, and I'm here to share my concerns about SDOT's proposed Route 40 lane through Ballard. The addition of a 24-7 northbound bus lane on Leary Avenue will have a substantial access and impact on my business and everybody who works there. Uh, Leary Avenue is a highly trafficked entry into downtown Ballard, and over the past 10 years, we've worked really hard to increase the foot traffic there as well. SDOT's proposed plan for a dedicated bus lane on Leary will choke that off um, by rerouting traffic and displacing much of the much, much needed parking on the north side of the street. What is so striking for everyone affected by the plan is how it feels excessive, like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. <laughs> to put a 24-7 bus lane where traffic patterns just simply aren't slowing down buses for more than an hour or two a day is just a lot. Um, all other times the neighborhood just it needs more uh, easy access. 
access and parking to keep the neighborhood vibrant. Please, please, please listen to the people that are on the ground every day. We really want a vibrant neighborhood as well. Thank you. Thank you. Heather Peel. Heather Peel, Friends of the Market. Pike Place is not an event street by any stretch of the word. It is the lifeline street in the Market Historical District that serves as the only loading dock for the most historic part of the market, as it has since 1907. Pike Place Market is a working market, and it's also a community, including low-income residents, a senior center, a food bank, a child care, and a medical clinic. It's not a place to hang out. For these reasons, the hands-on operator at the market, the PDA, needs to manage the street. The market had to be saved from the city's plans, and it does now, too. I support Amendment 3. Thank you, Councilmember Kettle. Please keep Pike Place out of the transportation plan and the levy and entrust the PDA to manage the street. Which brings me to, please also bring an amendment to delete the streetcar from the plan and connect the neighborhoods along First Avenue by bus instead. The streetcar would choke the market's operations because it would severely limit access to Pike Place and loading unloading for the market. Thank you. Christy McDonald. Good morning, and thanks for the opportunity to address um, the Ballard con Ballard's concerns, Ballard businesses' concerns about the Route 40 uh, revision. The stated goals, according to SDOT, are to reduce transit time, increase reliability, all this is for the bus, calm traffic, and safety. These are not the issues that have bubbled up from the business community in Ballard. Um, I don't quite know how this solution um, to a problem that hasn't been identified with the community's involvement has arrived. But for those of us who have businesses on Market Street and elsewhere in Ballard, um, getting deliveries matter, um, getting customers to and from our businesses matter enormously. Um, and the most frequent thing that we hear still is parking. I want to say that I appreciate the city's approach to parking, jiggering the parking and having it turn over. There is a parking available for folks most of the time. Um, but this just doesn't feel like it's been a conversation. It feels like it's something. Thank you very much. Thank you. Christy Kisby. Morning. Thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, with all of you. My name is Christy Kisby. My husband and I own a business, have owned a business on Market Street for 23 years. Um, and we're here to voice our concerns about the impacts that the proposed Route 40 bus only lanes through Ballard will have on our community. We are by no means anti-public transit, but the proposed 24 seven bus only lanes east and west along Market Street, an already really busy corridor will eliminate two travel lanes. <clears throat> In addition, it will remove the already scarce parking spaces and loading zones on our street, both of which really are crucial to, our, uh, to businesses like ours. We have customers who come to Annie's from all over the city, actually all over um, the area, and they uh, come to us expecting to be able to load and unload um, projects for framing. We have a frame shop. So we kindly ask that uh, Thank you. Good morning and thank you for this opportunity. My name is Suze Appel. I own Pellington Properties on Westlake Avenue North and have seven small business tenants there. I want to make three points. One is that we need to um, allow freight delivery whenever um, the tenants need it, while SDOT has proposed a special 
freight and bus lane. It's really just um, trying to ameliorate the problem of a bus only lane. That's the worst part of this plan. The second is around congestion. The only time we have congestion on Westlake Avenue North is when the Fremont Bridge goes up and that's congestion going north. And with a bus only lane, that congestion is gonna be worse. And the third is what my colleague Mike Stewart said, we would like you to help us SDOT to work with us to make this plan work for everybody. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you. Eva Otto. Good morning, my name is Eva Otto and I am a small business owner in Fremont and I'm here to talk about Route 40. Um, I'm also a member of the Fremont um, Neighborhood Council and we've met with Route 40 uh, and SDOT and we've talked to them and, and it didn't feel like they were listening. Um, we have probably over 100 businesses along 36 in Fremont that will be impacted by Route 40. They're super small. They're all one-story businesses, mom and pop shops that all depend on parking to be able to get a quick run in, pick up, you know, that set of flowers or whether it's, um, what, you know, pick something up for your pet. Uh, and so I just wanted to say that I totally support Route 40 and would love to see it come through our community, but just not take away all the parking for all the small businesses in the community. So please help us find a compromise and um, communicate with SDOT that we would like to work with them. Thank you. Thank you. Margie Freeman. Good morning, Margie Freeman here. I appreciate the time. A um, couple bullet points about uh, Route 40. Uh, parking, express buses, math, freight lanes. Uh, 70 minutes is what it takes from going to South Seattle up to uh, Northgate. We're gonna save five minutes for, the, for these dedicated lanes. It doesn't work. The, uh, the impact of the travel time for the general transportation lanes is huge. Uh, there will be backups, there will be frustration, and there will be accidents. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say was the, uh, the freight lanes that they have uh, considered for sharing the bus lane is a, is a good idea. Let's put that in the bucket of things to use. However, they're only going to do it for a year, so who is going to what happens after that? So. Freight is really important to the city of Seattle and to our small businesses. Parking is too. We, we wish SDOT would work with us. Thank you. Thank you. Janice Stam. Good morning, and thank you for allowing us to speak to you this morning. I'm here to talk about Leary Avenue and the bus only route. Uh, I live on Leary Avenue in the senior community at Ballard Landmark, and uh, across the street from us is going to be a northbound bus only lane, which means there'll be no parking on the west eastern side of Leary. That means that delivery trucks, Moving trucks and other vehicles will not be able to stop or uh, park on the east side. Can you imagine a moving truck with having to move uh, furniture across Leary to the uh, Canal Street Station, for example? Uh, there is much congestion on the road on Leary Avenue right now, and this will only add to that. Uh, we hope that you will reconsider and work with us and help us work with SDOT. Thank you very much. Thank you. Neil Edwards. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak. I'm Neil Edwards. I'm the director at Ballard Landmark. We're a retirement uh, assisted living community where Janice lives. 
I'm here to share my opposition to SDOT's proposal to add the bus only lanes, uh, obviously specifically through Ballard and on Leary Avenue. A couple of reasons, it's not clear um, how uh, the project is going to interact or interface with another potential future project, uh, that being the missing link uh, bike trail. So a combination of those two things are a big concern for us and a, a number of others here today. One thing that is clear just to uh, highlight what Janice said is that the elimination of parking on the northeast side of, of our street, Leary, will force everything in front of our community. And uh, that poses a very serious safety risk for residents such as Janice and about 160 other senior citizens that Thank you. Eugene Wasserman. Hi, I'm Eugene Wasserman. I'm president of the North Seattle Industrial Association. We're the industrial maritime part of this coalition. Only in Bell and Fremont could you have industrial coming alongside uh, retail businesses and stuff. We tried to work with SDOT for three years on this project. We hired our own transportation consultant to work with SDOT. SDOT has refused to work with us. They promised us information that we'd like to see how they base their decisions. They actually refused to give it to us. They promised it and then they never delivered it. Uh, they also lied to us about how they talked to all these businesses that they told us they talked to when they put this project together. It turns out they talked to no one. So this is not how, as a new council, and I was one of the leaders in the district council elections, kind of behavior. And the only way we get anything done on freight, which you all have nicely supported, is we go to council member Strauss or we go to the mayor's office, but we don't get that help from us. Thank you. Pete Hanning. Good morning, Council. My name is Pete Hanning. I'm the Executive Director of the Fremont Chamber of Commerce. We are here today not to voice opposition to the Route 40 project, but to ensure that this project, as voted on by the people, makes the best use of the allocated funds for the betterment of all the stakeholders who live along this vital corridor. This network of roads goes through critical industrial and maritime zone lands, three vibrant and distinct business districts compromising hundreds of small businesses and tens of thousands of residents, and is a designated freight corridor. By implementing bus-only lanes 24-7, SDOT expects significant improvements in travel time. We have advocated for bus-only lanes Monday through Friday at peak times only to minimize the impact. If, mem if implemented as approved, however, the anticipated negative outcomes such as vehicular capacity, constriction of loading zones, and loss of short-term parking and severe backups and congestion will occur. Our large coalition kindly asks that this committee request SDOT to re-engage with our coalition to ensure the best outcomes possible. Thank you for hearing our concerns. Thank you. Clara Cantor. Sorry. That was oh, me. This one? Go ahead. Hello, is that better? Okay. Um, hi, my name is Clara Cantor and I'm a community organizer with Seattle Neighborhood Greenways. Um, I'm here to support the amendments uplifting the um, dramatic need to fund sidewalks in our city. Um, Seattle is missing 829 miles of sidewalks and building them at the rate of 1.7 miles per year is laughably inadequate and puts us on a timeline of 500 years before people with disabilities can access most of our city. <laughs> Um, I'm also here to ask you to oppose Councilmember Kettle's amendment explicitly excluding Pike Place Market from the possibility of future improvements to the street in front of the, the market. 
Um, making Pike Place more pedestrian friendly is supported by over 80% of voters in Seattle and a majority of market vendors. Even the Pike Place PDA's long-term plan points towards a different way to manage the street in front of the market. Um, there are many ways to continue to allow deliveries and freight access while we also make um, the street safer and more joyful, better access to the market for everybody. Um, but this amendment would prohibit us from even having those conversations. Um, I'm also strongly in support of the Route 40 moving forward. Adding that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to remote speakers. Uh, the first <clears throat> one we have is Scott Bajukian. Scott, you need to press star six. Thank you, Chair and Council Members. My name is Scott Banjukian and I live in District 2. I'm representing a coalition of advocates asking for a stronger incorporation of our highway mitigation work into the Seattle Transportation Plan. We include LIDI-5, the U District Partnership, we Connect South Park, and the Aurora Reimagined Coalition. <clears throat> we would like to see these projects acknowledged in the draft plan and to see better implementation of Council Resolution 32100 from last year. Our projects are real and they are making good progress towards implementation. We have invested many years of volunteer hours, built tremendous public buy-in across all council districts, and we have secured millions of dollars in funding for transportation planning. We offer a citywide vision for a safer and well-maintained roadway network, creating better places for people and bringing together um, everyone as one Seattle. We have submitted a comment letter with details on our two main recommendations. Uh, first is to add our projects to the large capital projects list under the implementation strategy. And second, to integrate more highway mitigation work directly into Key Moves Chapter 3. Thanks for your attention to the transportation issues in our city, and our coalition looks forward to working with you on this. Okay. Next up, we have Megan Cruz. Megan, you need to press star six, please. All right, Megan, we're going to move on to the next person. We'll, we'll get you on the flip side. Oh, I, I've been doing Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. I've, I, I did it like three times, sorry. Third time you do hear charm. me now? We hear you now. Okay, super. Okay, um, I'm Megan Cruz speaking on the Seattle Transportation Plan. This is the blueprint to ensure Seattle's right-of-ways work with buildings to absorb 120,000 new residents over the next 20 years. However, it doesn't have a plan for freight. The average U.S. household receives 162 packages a year, and this is consistent with the package counts for downtown uh, residential towers. E-commerce deliveries are growing by double digits annually, and the new comp plan calls for bigger, denser urban neighborhoods. When the trucks and vans supplying these new homes and businesses can't find parking, we know the problem spills into the street, causing a chain reaction with congestion, pollution, and pedestrian safety. The SDP even states that without freight parking requirements, there may not be enough loading docks built in new developments, making them even more dependent on the curb. To avoid the problems we've seen downtown, the STP needs an urban freight policy backed by SDCI's residential loading recommendations. I hope this committee can help initiate this effort. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you. Next up is Maggie Haynes. Maggie, please press star six. Maggie, are you there? Hello, this is Maggie Haynes. I'm a member of the Friends of the Market, and I speak with support 
Robert Bob Kettle's Amendment 3 to the resolution. We support excluding the Pike Place event street, number one, because it's not an event street. It's a place where local producers sometimes sell, where cars and pedestrians move very well. Sometimes I call it a slow dance but there is already priority given to pedestrians. It's necessary to remove both the words event street and removing Pike Place from the future levy. Thank you. Thank you. John Turnbull. Go for it, John. John, you're unmuted. I am. Yes. Go ahead, John. John, would you like to start your testimony, please? John, we'll come back to you. Next is Colleen McAleer. Colleen, please press star six. Good morning, council members. This is Colleen McAleer, uh, Lowerhurst Music Club in Northeast Seattle. Um, the process behind the transportation plan resolution has noble intentions, but it's very scant data that's offered to provide uh, information enough for a rigor analysis to make changes in policies and plans for the future. Data is missing about the effectiveness of the projects we implemented in the last 10 years Move Seattle funding. Data about the city's work patterns changing to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on major highways and congestion and peak times and its mitigation is missing. Data about how well the infrastructure performed with the growth of the urban centers and urban villages and bottlenecks they've created. Data is missing about trip generation and travel times with increased freight movement and more deliveries and road conditions and sidewalk conditions in the missing 800 miles. Data is missing about bridge replacements and its audits, and data is missing about the crime and safety issues reported to transit users, as well as the traffic delays created from road diets and the effect on small businesses, which you've heard today. So we asked that you get more data and answers from SDOT. They have a very narrow scope, which they have uh, put this plan together, and use what we've learned to make it a better plan for the future for mobility and safety for all the people at the city. Thank you. Thank you. David Haynes. Hi, David Haynes. SDOT can't and won't even fix all the potholes on the Route 40 between Ballard and South Lake Union. It breaks apart the bus and it injures your spine. Plus, they refuse to coordinate with King County Metro and the Seattle police to deal with all these evil, self-destructive, low-level drug pushers and junky meth heads who have still continuously taken over the bus stops that made life a living hell, justifying not even taking the public transportation ever again, buying a car or relying on your bike. So, you know, maybe keep SDOT a little more honest before they start tearing up more roads. And, you know, quite frankly, I think we still need to stop driving through Pike Place Market because it's a living hell. It's like a modern third world infrastructure and you need to take that connector and put it on the waterfront so it's more enjoyable and it would be a lot cheaper. Thank you. All right, next up, next up we have Nivi Achanta. Hello, can people hear me? Sure. Hello. Hi. Just confirming that you can hear me. 
Um, hi, I'm Nivia Chanta. I am part of the Fremont Neighborhood Council, Chamber of Commerce. It's been great seeing people here on the phone. I think it's kind of mean to call people names, but the reason I'm here is to support Route 40. Um, I take the bus. I do have a car, but when congestion goes up, I am more likely to ride the bus. I think that Route 40 needs to be improved. And I think small businesses are awesome, love them. And I, as a Fremont resident, only get to small businesses on the bus or on my bicycle. So I am strongly in favor of better bus only lanes. Um, and I don't want the concern of deliveries to be mixed up with parking spaces. I think those are two different things. Um, so as someone that uses transit way more than parking spaces, I wanted to just say that I am highly in support of better bus infrastructure, and I also love the emphasis on SDOT working with communities better. Thank you. Next up, Carter Portwood. Carter, please press star six. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. All right. Hi, I'm Carter Portwood. I live a few blocks from Leary in District 6, and I regularly take Route 40 as well as drive, walk, and bike along the corridor. I'm personally very excited for the pedestrian and pedestrian improvements in the bus and freight lanes that will improve the bus reliability and speed. I use Route 40 to patronize businesses in Ballard and Fremont, and I suspect that many others do. Um, SDOT has done extensive community outreach on Route 40, um, and community feedback has been very positive in support of the project, um, in spite of what a small contingent of business owners may say. These bus and freight lanes would improve transit for over 7,000 riders a day. Removing them in favor of a few parking spaces would be an incredibly short-sighted move that's at odds with Ballard's increasing density and Seattle's Vision Zero and goals. Uh, thank you for your time. Jonathan Gonzalez. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Cool. Um, hi, my name is Jonathan Gonzalez. I'm calling in uh, to support the Route 40 improvement. I live in um, Ballard in the Brewery District, and Route 40 is how I get around in, into Fremont and into downtown. My husband takes it to go in to and from work sometimes. And he has mentioned several times how it's standing room only and very busy during like peak hours. Um, I just really want to thank SDOT and um, for listening to the community and um, putting these improvements in. And I'm excited to see how the freight and bus only lanes will work because I believe that getting both buses and freight around the city is important. And it seems like SDOT is uh, making a plan for that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Kevin Trout. Hello, testing, testing. Am I coming through? Sure are. Excellent. Hi there. My name is Kevin Trout. I live in Ballard. I work in Fremont. Um, I'm here calling in support of the Route 40 project and really just upping our transportation game in general. Uh, as anyone that has walked around uh, or been around, you know, just been in the city for a while, has seen we're expanding tremendously. Lots of places are going from single family housing into multifamily units. And that kind of density is really lovely. It creates a really vibrant city and a lot of opportunity for people. And it also means that we're in a spot where we can't feasibly have everyone have a car. And what that means is we really need to be prioritizing how we're letting people get around the city, right? The freedom to choose how to get around. And when we think about how we can incentivize that because people respond to incentives, it is going through things like bring bus only lanes. So I'm here calling in support. I think they're a really lovely idea. And truthfully, we are not. Okay, John Turnbull, can you try again to press star six? Okay, let's try this. Yeah, we hear you. Does that work? Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, great. 
Uh, I'm uh, John Turnbull. I'm speaking with 40 years experience of managing uh, and operating Pike Place Market and the adjacent areas of First Avenue. I'd like to point out that in the transportation plan, there's a section called curbside management, which stresses critical access needs. You've heard a lot about that in Ballard. Uh, that also applies to the whole length of First Avenue where there's small businesses, hotels, low-income housing, other destinations, as well as the market. It's the only place along the curbside where you can take deliveries, emergency responders, first responders, uh, drop-offs, pickups, and it's essential to making these functional streets and sidewalk areas. Um, the transportation plan forgets all that when they get to the tra when they get to transit, because they talk about eliminating all the curbside parking, moving all the deliveries into Pike Place. It's totally inconsistent. Uh, the market needs to be managed better. And first, okay. Um, there are some people who are signed up uh, to speak for the public hearing for cl clerk file 314-512. Elizabeth Wilder, Jim Margard, Megan Teutsch, Brian Reagan, and Mike Peck. I just want to make sure they're here to speak to that matter and not to, okay. Uh, so we'll, we'll wait till the public hearing for that clerk file for you to speak. And that is item three on the agenda. No. Okay. We already heard from Jim and we already heard from Elizabeth, I think. Elizabeth Wilder. Okay. Uh, Megan Teutsch. the opportunity to speak today. My name is Megan Toich, and I'm here representing the Ballard Landmark along with the other Earth Neal and um, Janice, a vibrant, independent, and assisted living community of 170 residents in the heart of Ballard, located at 4533 Leary Avenue and Ballard Avenue. I'm here to voice my opposition about SDOT's proposed Route 40 bus only lane through West Lock, Fremont, and Ballard, and contrary to some other um, callers, I have yet to meet any small business owners that are in support of this. The addition of a 24-7 northbound only bus, bus only lane on Leary Avenue Northwest between 20th Avenue Northwest and Northwest Market Street will have a substantial access impact on small businesses as well as residential commu retirement communities such as ours, along the corridor. Leary Avenue Northwest is a highly trafficked throughput and connector for residents, workers, and visitors to Ballard. Additionally, our elderly residents' me medical needs mean that the fire department and EMS are pulled to Ballard Landmark an average of three to five times weekly and need to park in the middle of Leary Avenue to access our facility. However, due to the terrible congestion on Market Street, Seattle Fire Station 18 and EMS services must drive down the middle lane of Leary Avenue, essentially using it as a fire lane to not only access Ballard Landmark, but also Swedish Hospital and other businesses and homes in Ballard. Thank you, ma'am. Your time is up. Brian Reagan. We need to maintain our public transit fleet and keep routes that are efficient and serve both the high demand areas as well as those less accessible. However, the plan to turn Route 40 into a bus freeway is both a waste of money and extremely invasive to the neighborhoods with little to show for it. Walking on our sidewalks next to parking lanes feels much safer to me than next to transit only lanes like you have on Third Avenue downtown. The idea that we can or should become a car-free city has no merit. The proposed bus-only lanes would squeeze all the cars and trucks into traffic jams, spewing more carbon dioxide into the air than they do now. 
bicyclists would have to fend for themselves. Thank you. Mike Peck. Hello, I'm Mike Peck. I own a couple of buildings down in Fremont. Been there a resident and a business person for 40 years. Uh, I'm representing uh, small businesses in our in our building that's going to be impacted directly by a, a bus curb. A bus bulb that's going to be stopping traffic in the middle of a five-way intersection. Uh, <clears throat> these businesses are four woman-owned businesses that have been established there as long as 35 years. Uh, this bus uh, configuration with the bus bulb is going to drop the front door of the bus right into the lingerie store that happens to be adjacent to it. Uh, there's also another business next door that's utilizing some of this Sidewalk is some of their eating area for the public, and uh, it's being impacted by this as well. And that is move the bus stop a half a block north to uh, the Lennon statue, and we can all be happy. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. All right. Well, thank you. There are no additional registered speakers, and we'll now proceed to our items of business. We will now move on to our first item of business. Will the clerk please read item one into the record? Agenda item one, resolution 32132, a resolution providing an honorary designation of 8th Avenue between Seneca Street and Spring Street as Weir Harmon Way. All right, thank you. Will our presenter please join us at the table? Looks like you got there and uh, share your presentation. Once ready, please introduce yourselves and begin your presentation. Good morning, I'm Calvin Shaw with Council Central Staff. Uh, item one is resolution 32132. It would establish an honorary name uh, designation for 8th Avenue between Seneca and Spring as a Weir Harmon Way is offered by Council Member Morales. And I would offer the Council Member to speak to her Res uh, resolution. Yes, thank you, Calvin. Uh, Councilmember Morales, do you have anything else to add? Uh, well, I'll just make a few comments. Thanks so much, Cal, for working with me on this, and thank you, Chair, for allowing me to come. Um, Ware Harmon, for those who don't know, was the Executive Director of Town Hall Seattle for 17 years, and he really turned it into a focal point for civic life, uh, for arts and culture, political discussion, music. Um, in 2015, Seattle Metropolitan Magazine named him one of 15 people who should really run Seattle, um, and I think it was because of his focus on community and making sure that we all remember to stay uh, engaged with one another. He was a musician, a scholar, a huge Mariners fan, um, and a loving husband and father. Um, our kids went to school together, elementary school together, uh, and to many Mariners games together, so I'm really honored to be able to sponsor this resolution on his behalf and on behalf of uh, his family and the entire Town Hall Seattle community. So thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, Councilmember Morales. Do any of my fellow committee members have any questions, comments, or uh, Councilmember Moore as well? All right, well, uh, thank you, Councilmember Morales, for your leadership on bringing this to life and working closely with community to honor Weir Harmon in this way. Uh, this, this is terrific. I move that the committee recommend adoption of resolution 32132. Is there a second? Second. Oh. It has been moved and seconded to adopt the resolution. Are there any further comments? All right. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of resolution 32132? Councilmember Kettle? Aye. Councilmember Strauss? Yes. Councilmember Wu? Yes. Vice Chair Hollingsworth? Yes. Chair Saka? Aye. Chair, there are five votes in favor. All right. Uh, the motion carries, and the committee recommendation that council adopt resolution 32132 will be sent to the April 9th, 2024 city council meeting. Now, and thank you, Councilmember Morales, again, for your leadership on this. We will now move on to our second item of business. Will the clerk please read item two into the record? 
Agenda item two, resolution 32131, a resolution approving the Seattle Transportation Plan and superseding the transit, bicycle, freight, and pedestrian master plans. Thank you. We will now proceed with a discussion of the amendments. The proposed amendments that have been submitted. Will our central staff member please join us at the table? Already there. Hi, Kelvin. Uh, and so now, colleagues, you know what what we're going to do here is we're just going to go round robin, share our thoughts on each of the amendments. I'm uh, going to give each member an opportunity to speak on your own amendment, share any and and entertain any questions after that. Uh, from any of our colleagues here. Uh, and we'll start with Vice Chair Hollingsworth and go with the other members that had amendments and then, and then we'll allow our, our colleague, Council Member Moore as well, to speak on her amendment. Well, go thank ahead. you. Go ahead, Madam Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chair Saka, I really appreciate your help and um, also your leadership on this. I know it's a big undertaking uh, for our Seattle Transportation Plan and then also the move levy. You have a lot on your plate, so thank you, sir. Um, also want to thank Calvin uh, as well for helping. I know I I was kind of last minute on some stuff, so thank you for putting in the work and helping us. So the amendments uh, that, per, that I'm proposing um, that I'm going to be submitting to Chair Saka um, after this meeting um, are based on what I've heard from some constituents in District 3. It's not a comprehensive list, but it's a few projects that are emphasizing some of the, um, of the impact of the district and the surrounding communities. The first one that we've heard loud and clear, the late eight, Metro 8 is one of the eighth busiest weekday routes in the whole system while having the fourth worst on-time performance. Um, I know that we are not Metro, but we do deal with the infrastructure that helps Metro provide some of the services. Um, I know that riders are collectively losing thousands of hours every day, like waiting for the bus for the eight. It's also a line that I use as well uh, going home. So uh, that's project 35 of the large capital project list um, that you know we would love to see in uh, the levy. I'm also asking SOT to improve the safety on Lake Washington Boulevard corridor. There have been two um, there have been two roads, MLK and 23rd, that we have improved the safety on those. That has pushed people to use the Lake Washington corridor as they're traveling north and south um, or from the Central District on to South uh, Seattle. And so we're asking um, SOT to uh, look at some of those uh, to ensure that we have safety on that. It's 25 miles per hour. Um, but we've seen top speeds of 70 miles an hour, um, and there's a lot of residents along that road that would like uh, safety efforts to be improved as that. Uh, the third thing I'm asking is for SOT uh, to understand their role in public safety in our community. Uh, we've had significant issues with gun violence last year um, at some of the different high schools. We just had a drive-by shooting at Garfield High School. One of the biggest things that we heard from parents and from kids is that traffic calming around schools is super helpful. Um, and it, it helps create safe measures, whether it's crosswalks, whether it's, um, you know, different types of ways to create traffic calming around schools, which is, is huge. Uh, if we can make it harder for drive-by neighborhoods, harder for uh, to drive into neighborhoods to commit different crimes and then speed away, I think we can prevent some of the tragedies that are going on in our city as well. Um, also, uh, we've heard from a ton of people uh, the city is super dark. And so creating safety related items and pedestrian lighting improvements uh, across the city, I think is gonna be extremely helpful as well. Um, so lighting increases both safety and pedestrian safety. It helps prevent crime and eases the strain on our Seattle Police Department as well and helps with their efforts to um, you know, prevent crime and, and uh, activation in those areas as well. Um, and then also, uh, last but not least, um, we also have um, sidewalks. I know there's some amendments here on sidewalks, so supporting that as well, um, as we know how extremely important they are to our walkability in our city. So those are some of the few amendments that I'll be passing on to you, Chair Saka, and I will pass the mic to whoever is next about theirs. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Vice Chair. I'm actually gonna go to my left um, and acknowledge our colleague, Councilmember Strauss, uh, 
Councilmember Strauss, if you want to go ahead and speak on your proposed amendment. Yes, thank you, Chair. And uh, again, my apologies for needing to bring an amendment. I had somebody really smart tell me that this was supposed to be about good vibes, everyone getting something, and we're not doing prioritization, we're not talking about implementation. And I understand the connection between this plan and the comprehensive plan. And I think there was an oversight here. Last year, we changed zoning on and in this area from being uh, industrial to a new type of industrial. So essentially adding greater protections for the industrial zone in and around 14th Avenue. 14th Avenue is the local access street as compared to 15th Avenue, which is the arterial for freight. And so looks like SDOT left freight off of the map here for for 14th, so I'm asking to put it on. There's also a greater, larger community conversation about how do we create a stronger bicycle and pedestrian network in this area. We are, we're getting, we have a crosswalk on 15th at 53rd. We're getting one at 51st. We're adding in right now the Greenway on 6th. And so what essentially you have, if you could look at a map and you drew a box, 6th on the east, 17th on the west, 51st on the north, and 50, or 53rd on the north and 51st on the, on the south. Um, within this zone around 14th, adding pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure along 9th and 11th connects the public space at, at Leary Triangle to Gilman Park, which is another open and public space. So that is my amendment, Chair, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Strauss. Uh, let's see here, Council Member Kettle. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Saka. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for my fellow council members and Chair for your amendments as well. I'm supportive. Um, I, I really appreciate Council Member Hollingsworth highlighting the public safety piece because public safety is a policy element and it's so important for the Seattle Transportation Plan in addition to the comprehensive plan. And a big piece of that, which goes to <coughs> Council Member Strauss's um, amendment, is uh, freight. You know, I often talk about loading docks, but another good word is freight, because you know, we should solve the, tomorrow's problems today, and addressing freight is so key, uh, not just for downtown Belltown District 7, but clearly also uh, for Ballard and other District 6 and other parts of the uh, city. I'm also, haven't heard yet, uh, but I'm also uh, supportive of my colleague to my left, Council Member Moore, and her focus on sidewalks. Um, but my amendment today is related to uh, Pike Place Market. I'm, the amendment is to remove the uh, Vent Street number 65 from the plan. And uh, I should state first uh, that I am supportive of increasing the opportunities to expand the use of our city streets. And uh, we should look to how to pedestrianize uh, segments and create community. It's very important. And I should say, uh, not forget sidewalks. I know that's very important for, uh, for members here in the, uh, in the, uh, in the chamber. But I'm also supportive of uh, a proposal to do the same of a street in uh, Queen Anne that would uh, basically along uh, McClure Middle School and Queen Anne Community Center and the uh, um, Queen Anne Pool create a, basically a campus environment. So I'm definitely in support of you know, opportunities to expand you know, our city streets and pedestrianize them. But I also understand that good governance uh, requires us to look at each project and proposal and check in with the neighborhoods, check in with the stakeholders, and make sure that we make an objective decision based on unique circumstances and not decide with more of a cookie cutter approach. And to this point, I would note that Pike Place Market, and specifically uh, Pike Place, is unique. It's been ongoing, it's been operating since 1907 in an area where the city falls to the sea. This is not William Penn's uh, Philadelphia, where you have nice squares going everywhere um, in a nice flat manner. You know, that right is on the cusp of falling into the sea, and we have to remember our geography and our topography. There is no streets on the other side. There's no First Avenue further west or Second Avenue further west. Basically, we have Elliott Bay. Um, there are no service alleys like we see all throughout the city. There are no loading docks uh, on Pike Place or for Pike Place Market. Pike Place itself is the logistics node for nearly 500 small businesses. The street is key for business operations each day, receiving deliveries, but also taking out the garbage, recycling, and compost. There's so many different pieces, but most importantly, it served their customers because it is a business. Um, Pike Place Market uh, 
resides on both sides of Pike Place. It is a farmer's market. You have many vendors from farms across the region. You have craft vendors selling an incredible array of, of products. Uh, we have stores with doors, uh, you know, some known for selling coffee, but a whole range of uh, goods. And then we have the roll-ups that are essentially a grocery store and so important to the neighborhood, but also to the city, um, especially during the pandemic. You know, and some would say, oh, it's okay, the businesses will be okay, we can subsidize them. That's what I've been told. And the, no, as we know from today's paper, uh, you know, stories, we have a major deficit, we have major issues. We cannot be subsidizing businesses and a, and a system that is already working. And to the point about the, uh, um, the pandemic, when our city was down, Pike Place Market, under the PDA, the commission, plus the, the foundation and friends of the market stood up. The market organization uh, would have, has done great service to our city for over 50 years, and, but as I said before, adversity reveals, and the pandemic was an adversity, and it revealed what a gem Pike Place Market is to our city and what a service it provided to our city. Um, one thing I note oftentimes is that uh, Fisherman's Terminal, if I have visitors, you know, I take them down to Fisherman's Terminal, to Chinooks, and say, hey, this is a fishing fleet. This is real. You know, these, these fishing vessels go up to Alaska, North Pacific, wherever it may be. This is real. This is not San Francisco and Fisherman's Wharf where we have a rented fishing vessel. It is real. And that same concept applies to Pike Place Market. It's not some Disney project, it's not Hollywood, it's a real, it's the market, it's a business. And that's really what we need to think about as we move forward. And speaking of move forward, again, back to good governance. Good governance requires engagement with all stakeholders and importantly listens uh, to all stakeholders. You know, the old council presented a solution uh, that didn't, didn't really have any collaboration. Clearly, as you saw from the testimony, there's not a collaboration related to the Event Street, um, you know, event number 65. But we are a new council, and we are a new transportation committee. So we should remove Pike Place, uh, Event Street number 65 from the STP, and I propose, and I will take this on, that we look at Pike Place again with fresh eyes, engaging and listening to all stakeholders to include SDOT, Pike Place Market, all the various elements, uh, neighborhood groups, uh, District 7 Neighborhood Council, uh, citywide groups to include Seattle Greenways. I, I invite Gordon and Claire and everybody else to join in this new look at Pike Place Market, but also the DSA and the Chamber. So I, that's my proposal, is to remove number 65 from uh, the Seattle Transportation Plan and that I will you know, assist and work with all the you know, stakeholders um, to include Seattle Greenways, to look at the market again with Pike Place Market so we can look at all the issues and get a solution that works for everybody. So that's my amendment. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to it. All right, thank you, Council Member Kettle. Uh, moving on now to Council Member Wu. Uh, you didn't have a, a proposed amendment, but I, I know you've been hard at work behind the scenes, me and you, uh, you know, is making sure that your, your feedback was reflected in the amendment that I, the original amendment I put forward, but do you have any comments or, uh, or questions on any of the amendments from any of our colleagues? I have some really quick comments. I want to thank all the council members for bringing forth these amendments. They're very important. And as a citywide, I, I lean on you to bring forth what's important in your districts. Um, and so, yes, I support you know, public safety, the sidewalks, uh, making sure that we preserve or bring back our industrial maritime zones. Um, and looking at what's working, what's not working, and being able to pivot if something is not working. And so thank you, and I uh, support these amendments, and I have um, hope that, you know, when we look at the implementation, that we really incorporate, incorporate our priorities. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Rule. All right, uh, Council Member Moore, please go ahead and speak on your amendment. Great. Well, good morning and thank you very much, Chair Saka, for this opportunity to present um, and be invited to the committee. Um, and also thank you to Calvin for your help with drafting this amendment. And I know there's a fair amount of back and forth, so I appreciated the assistance. 
Um, so just to begin, as we know, the Seattle Transportation Plan will be the foundational document for transportation planning in Seattle for at least a decade. It does combine and replaces previously separate plans such as the pedestrian master plan. Um, there are over 11,000 missing sidewalks in Seattle. Uh, in District 5 especially, there's a deficit of sidewalks. Uh, a map provided by SDOT shows 36% of the missing sidewalks are in District 5, which is uh, the north end, 85th to 145th, and from the Sound to Lake Washington. So it's, it's quite a large geographic district. Um, this issue dates back to the 1954 annexation. Um, in which time the city was, uh, that area was promised sidewalks. So um, it's worth noting that the first Seattle transportation plan to be proposed since the, this is the first uh, transportation plan to be proposed since the arrival of the district council system um, being adopted by voters in 2013. Hence, I think the uh, sort of hyper local focus that, that we are getting reflected in <clears throat> many of the amendments here, which is I think certainly appropriate. Um, so for new sidewalks, we definitely need to clearly delineate uh, performance measures and establish baseline and also clearly articulated goals. The 2017 pedestrian master plan included such performance measures, goals, and a clear baseline for new sidewalks, and so we need that in our plan as well. So that's why I'm bringing forth uh, this amendment today. So it's a little bit um, technical, but I'll just talk about the first part of the amendment adds a recital to the resolution, and it quotes directly from the pedestrian element of the draft transportation plan, uh, which says, quote, a quality pedestrian network is at the core of an equitable and accessible transportation system, and sidewalks are the building blocks of an effective pedestrian network. So uh, my amendment would incorporate that as a whereas. Um, additionally, it adds to the resolution um, three sections, so um, which would amend the plan itself. The first is to add a new performance measure in the pedestrian element uh, with a desired outcome of growing the pedestrian network through additional sidewalks and alternative sidewalks, as we saw the other day on our tour. Uh, a performance measure for the percentage of areas that have sidewalks in tiers one through five, a baseline of missing sidewalks uh, beginning in this year, and a goal to complete the pedestrian um, network in tiers one through three by 2044. Um, secondly, to set a clear baseline, it adds a citywide map uh, that shows the missing sidewalks, and this is the map that you, Chair uh, Saka, requested clearly shows where sidewalks are missing, as well as the number of missing sidewalks by tier. And I do thank you very much for making that request uh, from SDOT. And then uh, it also includes the amendment uh, to the key move action, which is a pedestrian element of the plan, to construct new sidewalks or alternative sidewalks on all blocks that do not currently have sidewalks. So this is all, I'm just reiterating the language of the amendment. Um, I did also want to note that I shared this amendment with SDOT, um, and they are supportive. Um, they felt it would be helpful over the next 20 years to have council put down a marker both for the upcoming levy renewal deliberations and also for future funding decisions beyond that. And it would be helpful to have council make such a strong statement when it comes to how we approach grant and other leveraging opportunities going forward. So I want to thank SDOT for their uh, collaboration on this and also to thank you for the opportunity uh, to present that amendment and um, present it to colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Moore. And uh, yeah, so I sidewalks are, are clearly very, 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 adding new sidewalks specifically are clearly very, very important to me personally as chair of the Transportation Committee. I view it as, a, as, as one of our key urgent responsibilities to address. There, there has been a lot of political, elected political leaders in the past who've, who've made some progress. Um, and, you know, sadly, 400, potentially 500 years, you know, we, we've heard the current clip of construction is totally unacceptable. Uh, so 
I'm here to do better. I think this council is here from all these conversations that I've heard at the dais and behind the scenes, one-on-one, um, you know, here to do better in, in that regard. So Councilmember Moore, just wanna thank you uh, for your leadership on that. I added some sidewalk portions to, you know, my proposed amendment. Uh, and, and this is how we build on each other's work. Uh, and so I appreciate you and your amendment. Um, and I, I, I didn't think there was anyone more passionate about adding new sidewalks than me, but if there was, it's probably you and or Council Member Morales. Uh, in my view, that's a clear race to the top, by the way. Um, but, but for those watching and, 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 and listening to uh, you know, the perceptions of new sidewalks amongst, amongst our colleagues here, it's, I think there's a bright future ahead in Seattle for adding new sidewalks and sidewalk alternatives, uh, which is really important. Um, so I'll, I'll just kind of briefly talk about uh, like my proposed amendment, very high level. It just includes and calls out those specific things that I mentioned at our very last transportation committee meeting. Uh, and specifically it calls out the importance of adding new sidewalks and sidewalk alternatives it sets forth the, the council's high level expectations for a future, future levy renewal proposal that, again, very high level, prioritizes bridge maintenance, modernization and preservation efforts, the core kind of nitty gritty things. We'd love to, to, uh, to make bridges and, and roads uh, glamorous again, if you will. Um, and, and so it does that, uh, a safety and, well, calls out safe and mobile experience for all, including a once in a generation investment in new sidewalks, uh, calls out the, the need and the imperative rather for climate action and, and livability, including through electric vehicle charging infrastructure, adding new, new EV charging infrastructure throughout the city um, and um, amongst other things. It also uh, specifically you know, mentions that the various modal advisory boards are to continue because this plan obviously subsumes the various, you know, like pedestrian uh, master plan, freight master plan, bicycle master plan, et cetera, into this one document and more, a more expansive scope and breadth in this, in this document. Uh, but so the, the, the amendment that I put forth clarifies that those are intended to continue and remain ongoing, the work of those various boards. Um, and it also describes council's expectations for the STP Im implementation plan and reporting, uh, clarifying the importance of tracking progress and, and monitoring our progress for our asset management uh, planning efforts all up, including calling out specifically the bridge asset management plan. Uh, and then of course, adding the, the policy benchmarking component, which you know, I think memorializes what many of our departments do anyway. Um, but you know, force. I think, in my mind, this is intended to to make us, to enable us to be a little more intentional about about that important aspect of our policy planning and design efforts. Understanding what what's going on in other jurisdictions and how that may or may not impact what what we're doing. Um, and then finally, and I, I do want to give credit where where credit is due. Uh, our colleague, Councilmember Morales, made made a few proposed changes to my original amendment. And a few of them are more sort of minor, technical in nature. And, and one of them I'll call out is definitely more substantive. And I think it's a terrific idea. Uh, and you know, I, I, I do wanna give appropriate attribution and credit where credit is due. And that is, uh, she added the idea of, um, you know, basically highlighting the importance of for the new levy renewal highlighting projects that uh, prioritize, you know, progress towards our vision zero goals, really, really urgent and important. Um, I, I think it's a terrific idea. That was, that was something that I was personally going to add anyway, um, or thinking about adding anyway after I created the original amendment. So, uh, but we, we do need to make more urgent progress on, on vision zero and, and I'm glad that, uh, the consolidated amendment does exactly calls calls all that important priority as well, um, and then finally, Councilmember Moore, I'll say, uh, you know, I, I appreciate how your amendment calls out some specific 
benchmarks and and goals and metrics related to new sidewalks. And as as folks may recall, I, I called that out again during our last transportation committee that that was a, a disappointment that I hadn't seen in, in, in the document it is, it is it didn't treat the it didn't have as robust performance metrics for sidewalks, new sidewalks specifically as some of the other modal uh, elements. And so, um, so thank you again for, or this is the race to the top. Uh, all right, well, colleagues. Oh, of course the, like one of the, one of the, they're all, all these amendments are important, but more, I guess, procedural, uh, slightly less substantive is the amendment number five or six, was it the errata? How do you pronounce it? It's the errata. It, errata. This is, um, identified small technical changes that the department identified for yep. your consideration. Yeah, then those were surfaced to me, and I authorized those to be included, and and the in a standalone amendment last Friday. Um, and so, yeah, that's you know this is part of the sausage making that goes on with legislation, and I'm you know I'm, lear I'm learning errata. Uh, but yeah, those are kind of minor technical uh, department, generally department proposed um, tweaks to to make things more in line with, like to, to change wording, phrasing, uh, nomenclature, to make things more in line with, for example, the one Seattle comp comprehensive plan and um, amongst other things. So, so those are the amendments. Colleagues, are there any other comments, questions, feedback? Go ahead, Council Member Kettle. Chair Saka, thank you for the opportunity. I just wanted to uh, make two points. One is to, you know, the point of regarding sidewalks and what Council Member Moore said about, you know, the district and representing the district interests. And um, on that point, uh, you know, I'm in District 7 relative to 1, 2, and 5, or 5, 1, and 2. Um, you know, we don't have the same sidewalk requirement. We do have some, um, but I have to say that you know, from an equity uh, perspective, the prioritization for sidewalks definitely needs to be with districts five, one, and two. Um, I say that as the district seven rep. Yes, there's some areas that in North Queen Anne, parts of Magnolia, um, that need uh, some sidewalks. But you know, looking big picture, we need to think about the equity uh, pieces to this, the social economic impacts of this, and uh, and the public safety pieces as well. So, um, you know. Even though we're district, I think we also recognize the need uh, for these sidewalks. And, uh, and you know, on this point, one thing about going through this process from a District 7 perspective, changing topics to bridges, I really appreciate the, uh, the focus on bridges, the asset management plan, all these different pieces to bridges, because in reality, in a lot of ways, District 7 is peninsula. We have our six bridges, plus or minus, uh, that go over Interbay. Uh, we have the, the Ballard, the Fremont, and the um, the Aurora Bridges, um, and we have a couple other on North Queen Anne, two over Wolf Creek Ravine. We have the I-5 bridges. If you think about it, I mean, they're dividing between our water boundaries and I-5 and 15th and, and the rail yard. We're essentially a peninsula, and we really re rely on these bridges to get to west, north, and east. And so thank you for uh, you know, making, keeping this focus on bridges. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Kettle. All right. Any other final comments, questions on that topic? All right, we will now move on to our third item of business. Will the clerk please read, read item three into the record? Agenda item three, clerk file 314512, petition of Denny and Eastlake Limited Partnership and Denny and Stewart Limited Partnership for the vacation of the alley lying within block 24 Pontius fourth addition to the city of Seattle, extending from the north margin of Denny Way and the easterly margin of Stewart Street. All right, thank you, clerk. As presiding officer, I am now opening the public hearing on clerk file 314512. Clerk, how many speakers are signed up for this public hearing? Councilmember Saka, we have no speakers signed up for this public hearing. No speakers noted. All right, clerk, I will now hand this over to you. Uh, well, pardon me. No. All right, 
Being that there is not a member of the public present for this public hearing on clerk file 314512, this public hearing is now closed. Um, let's see. Okay. Will our presenters please join us at the table and share your presentation? Once ready, please introduce yourselves and begin your presentation. You already joined us. Welcome. Uh, good morning, Lish Whitson, Council Central Staff. Jackson Cook, S. Street Use. Uh, Michael Jenkins, uh, Seattle Design Commission. Beverly Barnett, Seattle Department of Transportation. Mark Brands, Landscape Architect with Site <coughs> Workshop. And uh, council members, today uh, you will be considering a petition for an alley vacation in the Denny Triangle South Lake Union neighborhood. Um, you'll receive a presentation on the proposal um, from Mark Brands. Um, SDOT and the Seattle Design Commission have reviewed the petition and are recommending conditional approval. Um, attached to my memo for this item are the conditions that the SDOT director has recommended. Um, and uh, yeah, we're available for questions after um, the presentation. All right, thank you. Yeah, senior recommendations, appreciate those. All right, colleagues, this vote will, what? You have a presentation. Yeah, so we, we've got a presentation for you. Okay. To share. So it's about 10 minutes long. All and, right. Uh, right. But I'm gonna go through the project and a little bit of background, knowing this is maybe your first vacation, just carry you through a little bit of the process. So I'm gonna share it on screen. Or do I, how do I, sorry. Well, thank you for your patience this morning. There always is uh, an unexpected glitch. So while they're figuring that out, I will say we, we recognize that there's a time constraint today, so we're sorry for the delay. But we thought um, the best way to understand the project is to do the visuals. And so Mark's presentation shows the site of the project, the larger context of the neighborhood, uh, vacation and no vacation alternatives. And those, I think, are so much more powerful than all 
of us kind of talking through. And I think as Mark goes through the presentation, you can see the way the street vacation policies are ordered and the elements that we look at and how we arrive at the conclusion um, to recommend the vacation. And then we're all here to answer questions because uh, I'm sure this presentation is going to get fixed really quick. And so we can talk about the design commission process. Uh, Jackson worked on all the street environment, which creates a very cool pedestrian environment. And Lish and I can always talk about the vacation process for as much time as you have. We can talk about that. So looks like maybe we're ready. So uh, thank you for your patience. Are we? Um, while we're waiting for that, I was just um, asking Beverly, while we're waiting, maybe what we can do is just give you a very quick primer about the two important elements of any vacation that we uh, um, evaluate, the Design Commission evaluates, and, and SDOT embeds in their recommendation, which is public trust and public benefit. <clears throat> public trust looks at when you remove the alley or the street, how do the remaining functions um, surrounding the site work? And in this particular case, the removal of the alley this particular alley was really not connected to the larger street grid in any meaningful way. By removing the alley um, and moving access to the site for both vehicles and uh, trucks from potentially going out onto Stewart onto East Lake was a much better move for traffic safety because what, what I think we all agree is moving traffic in and out of Stewart Street near Denny and the off ramp from I-5 is very problematic. So by moving it to East Lake and getting it away from high traffic areas, it, really, it was really an important move for this project. It also allowed the project to free up creating one building with a significant series of open spaces that would not have been available absent that vacation. More importantly, with the public benefit pa uh, package that you'll see, really looked at elevating public safety. By vacating the alley and um, having this applicant develop a series of public benefit strategies to enhance the remaining right of way, they were able to create substantial improvements at two of the most problematic intersections in downtown Seattle, the Stewart Denny Minor intersection and the Stewart East Lake intersection. It has a much more expansive pedestrian environment with improved and enhanced sidewalks that really elevate the pedestrian experience and take away and hopefully remove significantly potential automobile and pedestrian conflicts. You'll also see a significant investment for uh, protected bike lanes along East Lake. If the vacation didn't go through, those investments wouldn't have been able to realize, be realized. When we were looking with the, when the Seattle Design Commission was looking at the proposal, it became very clear that the applicant's lens that they were creating for public benefit elevated the notion of public safety for pedestrians and for automobiles, and hopefully you'll be able to see that. Uh, clerk, I have shared my screen. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Strauss, uh, uh, Bertus, member of IT. Uh, Councilmember Strauss to the rescue. Let's, 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 let's roll with that. Magic button. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Apologies. Um, so thank you, Michael and Beverly, for, for giving them some background. I will roll through these slides efficiently. I can find my mouse here. Just tell me when you need next slide. <laughs> are, you, are you controlling? I am controlling your screen. Thank you, oh Council gosh. Member Strauss. Next slide, please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the site is located at a, a real gateway to our city, uh, not only as you enter off of I-5 from the north, but also from Capitol Hill. Uh, the site is bounded by arterials of, of Stewart, Eastlake, and, and Denny. Next slide, please. The site has a, has a collection of buildings uh, framed in the red uh, uh, box uh, or perimeter is is the collection of parcels. The alley really serves only these parcels that the developer has pulled together for this project. There is one outlying parcel that is not part of the project, the very tip to the north. 
Next slide, please. This slide does a good job of showing you the amount of drive cuts noted in red. So as we talk about pedestrian safety and Vision Zero, this is a really important part of the conversation. Really appreciate that conversation about sidewalks. This project is very much about improving our public realm and pedestrian safety. Next slide. We had a robust community outreach uh, process from start to finish, and that included and highlighted in here are several important neighborhood groups that really became our partners throughout this process. It's really important as we talk about public benefits. Youth Care, uh, Emanuel Lutheran Church, and the Cascade Neighborhood Council. Next slide. When we go through, I petition the city uh, to vacate a right-of-way, it is very important first step that we go through public trust analysis. And I pulled out one slide here, we call it our nine block analysis, it's essentially an urban design analysis looking beyond our border to look at things that relate to light air views, open space circulation, pedestrian activity. In this case, open space is important in this neighborhood. <coughs> the linear corridors of Thomas Street at the top of the page, I'll go through a bike connection that we're making that connects to uh, the King County bike lanes to the north, but also to the bicycle master plan, which notes the connection via Howell into the city center. Next slide, please. As part of the public trust, we then compare vacation, no vacation. So this slide illustrates the no vacation scheme on the left of page where we maintain the alley. Uh, we get two parcels of development and on the right is the vacation scheme. We're actually able to consolidate get a more efficient floor plate and really work on that urban design, the, the, the mass of the building in respect to the public realm. Next slide, please. And this shows it in, in three dimensions and it shows the alley on the left that's maintained. You get a small parcel of open space facing what we call lower Denny, below Denny Way, the bridge, and then the generous open space and the deep setback that we get on the no vacation scheme to the right. Next slide, please. This is a, a, a really good analysis of the transportation relates to safety. When we maintain the alley, uh, we need to use it. We are required to use it for loading and access. It uh, also exits out onto an arterial in a very awkward fashion of Stewart, which is a one way uh, into the city to the west. Uh, enter and then they have to enter from the Lower Denny, creating that awkward turn off of Stewart onto Lower Denny. So there's all kinds of conflicts with pedestrians. On the right is a consolidation, and this is the big one. I pointed out all those drive cuts. The initial slide, we're able to consolidate into a single drive cut and really and clean up our city sidewalks and increase the safety. Next slide, please. And this is the pedestrian counts. Uh, so on the left is the no vacation scheme where we get no improvements. We continue to have conflicts at two key intersections at Denny and Stewart and also St Denny, excuse me, Den uh, Stewart and Eastlake. Again, as we clean it up, we create these pedestrian refuges on either triangle, and I'll show you those in a moment when we get to the public benefits. And the next slide is public om is open space. It kind of speaks to itself. When we do this deep setback, we are uh, able to offer publicly accessible private space uh, as well as the, the uh, uh, contribution to the right-of-way. In a moment, you see the big green swath south of the no-vacation scheme. Well, that's turning that street into a pedestrian street and taking cars off it for the most part. So next slide is our proposal. And I won't go through this in detail. I'm going to point out three things that are going on here. The deep setback that I mentioned several times, uh, again, creates light, air, and views into the city, especially as you approach down Stewart Street as an entrance. The transition, the pedestrianization of Lower Denny into a people space rather than using it for cars and vehicles, and then East Lake, a wide right of way, it's 80 feet wide, and the transition from that in from uh, a ar main arterial into also a shared space with bikes and peds. Next slide. Okay, these are our benefits. So I'll end on a collection. We have seven benefits. The top uh, portion is really focused in on pedestrian safety, the, the crossings, the sidewalk space, East Lake Avenue and the bike connection, and then we make a contribution to the wayfinding package. And then the bottom tier is really focused on the Lower Denny and the pedestrianization of it. Next slide. So the first crossing is at Denny and Stewart. Uh, it is a rather dangerous uh, location for a crossing, a very popular one at that, where you have conflicts with vehicles turning onto Lower Denny, a, a, 
a really uh, small pedestrian refuge area uh, that does not serve uh, pedestrians well. And on the right is the cleanup of that. We're able to relocate the entrance into a pedestrian street of Lower Denny and then create proper refuge space and also amenities to go along with that. And then before and after photo, the next slide please, is before, and so that's looking to the east. Uh, the Denny Bridge deck is on the right, uh, Stewart Street to the left, and then here's the improvement. So we're able to close uh, that street to normal traffic. We're able to create a generous pedestrian space, a safe crossing and all the amenities that go along with that. Same thing for the crossing to the north. Uh, again, unused right of way that was closed years ago. It used to be a two way in either direction. Now it's, two, it's one way going north. It's left over right of way, almost half of it. So it's a very generous area to work and a new crossing. Before and after photos, <clears throat> before looking north and then cleaned up and we were able to actually re relocate a crosswalk as well, make it perpendicular, which is what we're accustomed to as a pedestrian to really clean that busy intersection up. Thank you. Okay, under the next benefit is East Lake. It's again, significant opportunity here to clean up a right of way, an 80 foot right of way that is really only partially utilized by two traffic lanes going north. So we're able to take that and turn it into a bike connection uh, and really feed into the King County bike lanes that are being built to the north on East Lake that feed into Thomas Street that get you all the way over to Elliott Bay. And then eventually on the south, uh, which is the right of the screen, into Howell, the network that is being developed by the city. And then before and then after, next shot please, image. This is looking north uh, on Eastlake Avenue. The project is on the left, Eastlake Avenue on the right. You can see the off street bike path, generous sidewalk, and a double lay of conifer trees, which does not happen very often in our city. Next is a contribution to wayfinding. This is a program uh, that is ongoing and under implement, currently under implementation with SDOT Urban Design. And so this is a contribution to that program. Uh, no longer developers actually implement this and make contributions to the program and SDOT actually manages it. And then on, end on Lower Denny. And this is a, a very exciting one. We're able to uh, change this, really transform it as Michael mentioned before into a pedestrian street. So we've closed it off the advice and guidance of SDOT uh, with bollards. So it is accessible via emergency vehicles and maintenance vehicles for both building and the bridge deck, but otherwise for pedestrians. We're do what we're doing to serve that, next slide please, is amenitizing it. So beyond the bollards, the red dots on either end, we have benches, we have pedestrian scale lighting, and we have amenities. We have power, water, we have a storage room that all serve community events. And I'll touch on that in a moment. We also have bike fix it station here. So something along our bike path that has utility. First shot is before, next slide please. And this is looking east up into Capitol Hill, uh, Denny Way on the right. You can see the surface car park uh, and it's kind of an alley essentially is what Lower Denny acts as. Next slide is a transformation. Um, closing it down and creating a pedestrianizing, getting very generous landscape opportunities that also serve as stormwater sinks. Next slide, please. This is the amenity zone where we have power, water, a bike fix station. Notice that we've got glazed conditions, we've got retail and as much active use facing that as well to help increase the, the uh, safety, sense of security. Next slide is looking west, the other direction. And then the next slide shows the transformation again. And you can see the bike lane in foreground there. And then I'll end on the last one, which is uh, a mural. It's a public artwork. Uh, we a shout out to Urban Artworks who led us through this proce process, a great uh, organization. Um, and con basically signed up our community members of I mean, the folks I mentioned in the beginning, Youth Care, Cascade Neighborhood Council, Emanuel Lutheran Church, the design team, member of design commission to select an artist. We're very happy to share with you the next slide. Council member Strauss, you'll recognize that image on the lower right. Ballard, uh, we have uh, engaged, selected Jen Vickers as our artist. We're very excited to, to get her going. She, concept, initial concept, I should say, is up on the top of the screen there. And then the last slides, I won't get into it all, but these become part of the ordinance. And if you go to the next slides, please. 
they really do itemize in detail the improvements we're making, and then on the right of the screen is an estimated cost to the developer, in addition to the market value that they pay for the alley itself. So these are contributions that are not required by mitigation that the developer is making. And that is the end of the show, and I'll take any comments. Thank you. And sorry about the debacle there at the beginning. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member Strauss. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Council Member Strauss, chair of our budget committee, finance committee, uh, one of the most se senior members of our council, um, and, and uh, amongst other things, and, and well expert proud. slide clicker. <laughs> uh, so so I'll, sh I'll share the words that Deborah Juarez used to share with me, which is, she would say to me, I'm not smarter than you. I've just been here longer. <laughs> there, there it is. There it is. Um, so thank you all. Uh, colleagues, any comments, questions for, for our uh, representatives here on this matter? I have a question. Yeah. Um, since we've been talking about loading a bunch this meeting, uh, so I saw that loading dock was there, and that's where garbage pickup is as well, so would the garbage trucks be entering in through that loading dock and being able to back out, or would they have to stop on the streets? The, you're right, the, the first statement, everything goes inside the building. So trash, recycle, loading, parking, everything on one consolidated drive cut off the street. And that includes the commercial spaces they're loading. Correct, and everything moving in and out. Um, next question is, I'm just really curious. It looks like I, I love the improvements uh, made, but wondering, at the loss of parking spaces, do you know how many? On street parking, I should have mentioned that, uh, Council Member Wu, if you could go to the, uh, to the, just keep scrolling down, if you will, to the site plan. We have preserved parking along East Lake. Uh, that is the one place where you can uh, load, park, short-term parking. We are eliminating, I'm gonna hazard a guess at maybe seven or eight stalls along Lower Denny. You cannot park on Stewart. Uh, there was back and angled parking uh, along, so we are replacing that with parallel parking, so we are losing spaces there as well. I will also say that there's an expansive drive cut at the end as well, so it's, I would say, it's, it's not really regulated parking so much up there. It's just this leftover unused right of way that, we'll, that we're eliminating and turning into pedestrian space. And all the bicycle improvements, is that part of a larger plan for that area? It, it that certainly connects? does. It feeds into what is being constructed right now north of, of John and, and Stewart, that, that access onto the freeway. King County is building bike lanes that feed into the neighborhoods to the north, East Lake, but also to Thomas Street, which is really important as that network continues to develop. And as the city develops the network into the city via Howell, as you turn the corner and in, into the city, that'll be a valuable connection as well. So this is a key link. Thank you. Right, thank you. Council Member Kettle. Thank you, Chair Saka, and thank you, Council Member Strauss. Can you scroll up all the way to the beginning? <laughs> we had those photos. Uh, but you to work today, thank you. Uh, stop, 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 second one right there. Um, before talking about it, I just had to stop on this photo. I thank you so much, because it highlights the point that I just made earlier about D7 being the peninsula. As you can say, we have a water boundary to our west, we have a water boundary to our north, and right there, we have another boundary that we need bridging over, and it's called I-5. And that just shows the point so well. So thank you for including that photo. In fact, I need to get a copy of it uh, since it's so good. Um, I also want to thank uh, the, the, the provisions, the points of the, uh, the plan related to traffic and pedestrian safety. I think that's very important. You know, we have to be mindful of these things, and so thank you for being, you know, to incorporate those elements into there. That's very important. Um, you know, it's, you know, bleeding public safety committee into the transportation committee. Thank you for that, and 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 also for uh, the canopy piece. Uh, you know, as I've stated before, evergreens put me in a happy place. So I really appreciate the conifer trees, particularly on East Lake, um, and that's an important piece too because we need to increase our tree canopy. And I like the fact that you're um, really pushing that side of the uh, the plan as well. So thank you. And as your District Seven representative, I you know I do support uh, along with Central Staff's uh, recommendations. You know the plan overall. Thank you. 
Thank you, Council Member Kettle, and uh, thank you, Council Member Kettle, for um, I, I'm glad I, I can always count on Council Member Kettle to to find the nexus between public safety and anything. <laughs> uh, at, at, but as chair of the the uh, our public safety committee, um, I, I would expect nothing less. And you know, I wholeheartedly agree. Like everything we do doesn't exist in a silo. It doesn't exist in a vacuum. Everything there's dependencies and, and connections between every single thing that we do. We need to understand that. So, but I appreciate you for helping us be calling it out and helping us be more intentional about it. Uh, <laughs> Council Member Strauss. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'll just end with uh, a, an appreciation. I love street vacations. I love term permits. This is where I really enjoy all of my work. Also, uh, colleagues, I've worked with Mark Brands on a number of different projects from Thomas Street to street vacations to Ballard Avenue. Mark, I think this might be the best plan I've seen come out of your, your shop so far. So really, uh, thank you, kudos, uh, continue breaking the mold. And Councilmember Saka, I don't know, if we, we switched offices. So in the, um, how do you call it, in the, where, where you, the closet, there's a whiteboard that said, transparency creates robust conversations. And that was actually a quote from Mark. Um, so just bringing it all full circle. Love it. Hey, it's still there, by the way. <laughs> I don't use that whiteboard much, but um, but I support the principal, so that's exactly. why it's still there. Same. Uh, it, in any event, um, all right, cool. Well, thank you, colleagues. Thank you, everyone, for this this insightful presentation. This is really the last mile here, sort of where we're at in the stage. Uh, colleagues, we're we're now gonna. This vote will proceed in two parts. First. We will vote to add SDOT's recommended conditions. And then, if there are no objections, we will vote on granting the clerk file as conditioned. As a reminder, colleagues, this matter, as you know, has been before previous councils multiple times since early last year. Uh, and so this is really the final stages of approving this specific alley vacation. We're, we're the last mile, not even the last mile, the last 100 yards of a, of a marathon, really. And, and so, um, you know, as, as Council Member Strauss, Strauss aptly noted, this is the, uh, the, the sort of nuts and bolts and, and spinach of, of the, the work that we do um, and these alley and street and, and you know, permits, vacations. And uh, so in any event, this is really, really important work. Some of these things are a little more glamorous or sexy, like the Seattle transportation plan, levy renewal, but this, this right here, this third item on the agenda is, uh, is again, you know, the kind of the nuts and bolts, the bread and butter of, of what we do, because all those other things don't always come before us, but this type of stuff generally does. In any event, any final questions, comments from any of our, our members here? No? Okay, well, I move that the committee amend clerk file 314512 to add SDOT's recommended conditions as shown in attachment one to Council Central Staff's memo. Is there a second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to add the conditions to the clerk file 314512. Will the clerk please call the roll on amending the clerk file? Councilmember Kettle? Aye. Councilmember Strauss? Yes. Council Member Wu? Yes. Vice Chair Hollingsworth? Yes. Chair Saka? Aye. Chair, there are five votes in favor. All right. Now, if there are no objections, the council rules will be suspended to allow the committee to vote on the clerk file on the same day a public hearing was held. Hearing no objection, the council rule is suspended and the committee will proceed with voting on the clerk file. I move the committee recommend city council or I, I move, excuse me, I move this committee recommend city council grant as conditioned. Clerk file 314512. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to grant as conditioned. Clerk file 314512. Will the clerk please call the roll on the granting of the clerk file? Councilmember Kettle. Aye. Councilmember Strauss? Yes. Council Member Wu? Yes. Vice Chair Hollingsworth? Yes. Chair Saka? Aye. Chair, there are five votes in favor. All right. 
The motion carries and the committee recommended recommendation that council grant as condition clerk file 314512 will be sent to the April 9th, 2024 city council meeting. All right. Well, thank you everyone. Thank you, uh, council Great members. meeting today. Uh, they're all great. Um, because we have a great vice chair. Uh, <laughs> but we have reached the end of today's meeting agenda. Is there any further business to come before the committee before we adjourn? No. Hearing no further business to come before the committee, we are adjourned. It is 1124 a.m.